Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to create a basic state machine for Pygame. This is a simple way to add a bit of structure to your game code and to separate out functionality to make things easy to manage. For this example, I'm going to put together a simple example that will show how to load a game and navigate through a splash screen, main menu screen, game screen and game over screen, allowing us to start a new game or go back to the menu at the game over screen. I've got a blank project set up here, so first I need to install Pygame. And I'm just going to set up some files that will outline the structure of the project. So I'll create the entry point for the game, a main.py file. And I'll create a file to hold our game object. This is what will manage the state for us. I'll want to put our states in one place, so I'll create a states folder. And in there, I'll set up the states we're going to use. So I'll add a file for the base state that all states will inherit from and the states themselves, the splash screen, main menu, the gameplay and the game over screen. That's our structure in place, so let's start adding things. We'll start with the entry point as we'll be keeping this quite simple. So in our main.py file, we're going to import sys and pygame. Sys will be used to make sure the game is fully closed down and obviously pygame is our game library. Then we'll add imports for our states. Those classes don't exist yet, but we'll add them soon. Finally, we want to bring through the game object that will run the game and manage our state. Now we want to set up our game, so we initialize Pygame and set the window size to use. Here we've given it the Pygame display to use, the states we've defined, and given it the initial state, the splash screen. I've set the screen to be full HD because clearly I make AAA games. Then we can define the states that our game will have. This is just a dict containing all the possible states for our game. Then we create an instance of our game and set it running. Here we've given it the Pygame display to use, the states we've defined, and given it the initial state, the splash screen. Now the game will handle everything in a loop. So that will block the thread until the game is finished. So all we need to do after that is to quit Pygame and exit the application. Now we have our skeleton structure and our entry point in place, let's set up our game object. First we're going to need to create a class and we're going to need to bring in Pygame as a dependency. Then we can add a constructor for this class. In here is where we set the initial state of the game. As we saw in the entry point to our game, we're passing in the Pygame display, our available states and the initial state for the game. So now we can set the initial properties for this object. We set a done value to false. When this is set to true, the game will be over and we can exit the application. Then we're setting the display so we can have access to it later, as our states will need it to draw updates on. Then we have clock and FPS, which will be used to determine how fast to render the game. We're then taking a copy of the passed in states and the initial state name, and we're getting the initial state object from the available states using that name. The next step is to implement the functions needed to run our game. First up is the event loop function. This will be called in our game loop to handle any events that have happened on the current state such as quitting the game or handling key presses. Then we're going to add a flip state function. This will be called if a state is marked as being done and will handle the transition to the next state. It updates the relevant values, sets the new state and passes along any persistent values. You may want some data to persist between states, for example a player's score to display on the game over screen. Finally, it calls the startup function on the state. This sets the persistent value and can handle any initialization you may want for when the state becomes active. Next is the update function. This will check to see if the game should exit, if we need to transition to a new state using the previous flip state function, and we'll call the state's update function to handle things such as sprite movements or whatever else is necessary. We then have the draw function, which is pretty simple. This will tell the state to draw to the screen, passing in the reference we took earlier. 
Without this, nothing will be visible. And finally, we have the run function. This is our main game loop. It's going to run until our game has been told to exit. And in that loop, we progress the game forward in time, handle any events that have been raised, have our state update and drawer itself, and then update the Pygame display. Now that we have the crux of our game in place, we need to start implementing the states so we have something to actually show. The first thing needed is to set up our base state. This is the base class that all states will inherit from. That way we can have a set of functions we can call in our game object we just created, knowing that all the functions are in place so no errors will be thrown. The functions will just pass if they aren't implemented in the actual state. It also sets out the base properties that all states will need. So first we'll import our Pygame dependency and create a class again. Then we can implement the constructor. This sets the common properties for all states, even if their values aren't fully initialized. Done and quit are set to false, as we don't want the state to exit as soon as it opens, and we don't want the game to quit. We set the next state to be none, and set the screen rectangle to be the display surface. Persist is going to be used if we want to pass data between states, and we set an initial font. I have not provided a font file, so this will use a default system font instead. This is a way to use the same font throughout the game. If you want different fonts, you can set them in different states. Now we can add the common functions to be used across all states. We have four common functions. Startup will just set the persistent data by default. Any other functionality will be taken care of in the states themselves. Then we have get event for handling events for a state and update and draw for the state. These will just pass in the base with the functionality being added in the individual states. With a base class for the states in place, we can start implementing our states. So let's start with the splash screen. First, we import our dependencies, Pygame and the base state we just created. And we're going to create our splash screen class, taking in the base state to inherit from. Then we need to implement the constructor for the splash screen. Here we first call the super constructor, so our base class constructor runs first as we previously saw. Then I'm setting a title, which will use the font from the base class and use it to render a string for us. I've used the name of my awesome game for this, and I've set it to be blue. I'm then setting a title rect value, which is set to the center of the screen. This is where the title will be drawn and I've defined the next state as the menu, which we'll implement next. Finally, there's time active, which is set to zero. Given this is a splash screen, I'm going to use this value to track how long the screen has been visible, and once it passes a set threshold, we'll move on to the next state. Since we're going to dismiss this state after a period of time, we'll need to add an implementation of the update function. Here, we're checking updating the time active based on the number of milliseconds since the last update. And if we've been active for more than five seconds, we'll move on to the next state. The only other thing we need to do for the splash screen is implement the draw function so that something is visible for the splash screen. For the purpose of this example, I'm just going to have it draw a black screen and draw the title we set in the constructor to the screen. Now that's done, let's move on to the menu state as that's what the splash screen will trigger. We'll set up the basics again, add our imports, create the class and constructor. This is going to be a pretty basic menu. We'll add two options, start the game or quit. And they're just going to be text items that will change color once selected. Simple, but enough for this example. So we need an active index. This will track which item is currently being highlighted by the player. And we'll have our list of menu options, just the two mentioned before, start and quit. I've set it up so the next day is the gameplay. We either start a game or quit. If you had others, such as an option screen, etc., you probably want a conditional setting of this value based on the selected item. Next, I'm going to add a function for rendering the text. We're just going to take an index for which item to render, then we can grab the text content from our list. And we define the color to use based on whether or not the item we're rendering is the actively selected one. To be able to properly render the text, we also need to provide a position to render at, so I'll add a function for getting the position. This takes the index again, and the text which will be an output from the previous render text function. 
We set a center position for the text based on the center of the screen, but increasing the Y position based on how many items we render. Then we get a rect to use for the text using that point as the center of it. When the user selects an option, we need to handle the action. So I'm going to add a simple function for that. Here, we're just checking the active index, and if it's the first item, start game, we set done to true, so it will transition to the gameplay state. Otherwise, if it's the second option, quit game, we set quit to true, so our game will exit. Next, we implement the get event function for the state. In this case, events are mostly going to handle moving through menu options. We check for a quit event first, and exit if true. Then we're looking for key up events and updating the active index appropriately, depending on whether the user presses up or down. And then if they press return, we want to call the previous handle action function. The final bit to add for the menu state is the draw function so that our menu screen is actually displayed to the user. For this, I'm just filling the screen black and then looping through the options I set in the constructor. For each option we get the text render and draw the text to the screen using the get position function added earlier. That's our menu state done, so we can move on to the gameplay state now. Again we import Pygame and set up the class. And then I'm going to set the values this state will need. I'm going to keep this very simple for this example, so all that's going to happen here is I'm going to draw a rect to the screen and allow the player to move it around using the arrow keys. If you press the spacebar that will end the game so we can transition to the next state. This might not be a realistic use case, but it serves our purposes here. So we're creating a new rect here, initializing it at the top left of the screen at 0, 0, and we're making it a square with a height and width of 80. Then I'm repositioning it to the center of the screen, and finally setting the next state to be the game over screen. Now we need to handle events to move our square when the player presses a key, so I'm going to implement the get event function. Here we're just checking for the event type, quitting if that event is raised, and handling key up events otherwise. I'm using the arrow keys to move the square in the appropriate direction, and space will take you to the game over, as previously mentioned. Award winning gameplay right here. Now we don't need the update function for this example, as it's purely based on key presses. Most games would implement that. Instead, the only thing left for this example is to add the draw function. All we're doing here is filling the display black and drawing our rect, the position of which will have already been updated in the get event function. And that's it for the gameplay state. The final state to implement is the game over state. As I said at the beginning of this video, when you reach the game over screen, we're going to give the player the option of either starting a new game or going back to the menu. So this will deviate from our usual change of state slightly. We'll set up the class once again, then I'm going to add the game over text to the screen and another line below that to show some basic instructions. Then we need to implement the get event function to handle the key presses. As the instructions say, pressing enter will take you back to the menu screen, space will go back to gameplay. I've also added it so that pressing escape will quit the game here. The final part is to draw the game over screen, so we add the draw function. Again, we're just filling the screen black and drawing our two strings to the display. But that's our state machine set up and ready to go. You can now run the main.py file and it will launch into our splash screen. A few seconds pass and we see our menu. If we select gameplay, we see we move into that state and can move, now move our square around. Pressing the spacebar takes us to our game over screen. And pressing spacebar again takes us back to a game. If we press return on the game over screen instead, we go back to the menu. There are plenty of ways you can expand on this, but I think it provides a nice way of structuring your game code. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if anything is unclear or you want me to expand on anything. Thanks for watching.